Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Today is September 17th, 2021, and it is time for the next Pepper update. So for the past month, I have been doing a lot of work tending to the plants, so they are looking amazing. So you will see as we go along. But first, I want to update you guys on the indoor Pepper plants, and this is one of them. This is the Kangstar White Tie grown in the MTN Grow Station developed by Chris in Norway, my buddy Chris. So Chris, if you're watching buddy, here is the system that you gifted me. It is wonderful, it's been working great, I love it and I, <laughs> I can't wait for the next project. But guys, look at this, the peppers are just throwing out so many fruits. So often when I eat dinner or lunch or whatever, I'll just come by, pick a pepper and there's just so many i mean i can't even use them all and i have a ton in the garden too so it's it's a lot of peppers <laughs> and i have been giving a ton away so this one this variety is uh very special because i have selectively uh, grown pods that i chose from uh, seeds that i collected over the years and i typically go after the big old pod like these here so I keep growing the bigger pods and the bigger pods and man, see the, the they are starting to be very consistent and the pods are pretty good size. So I pick only the biggest pods to keep growing. So I'm going to see in a few years if the, the trade will continue and the white tie will just become enormous peppers. But uh, <laughs> we will see, you see, these pods are enormous guys, they're huge. So, um, that's what I've been doing to these plants. So let's go outside and I will show you the rest of the plants. Okay, next we have my pepper in a can. And this is the pink tiger. And uh, I haven't harvested the pod, so they're kind of shriveled now. So uh, those are going to be for seed saving. And I will be growing these again. Look at how beautiful this variety is, guys. They have variegated uh, leaves and... Uh, they, they change color very often so initially it was all purple and then it started to get to this whiter color so now it looks so pretty and I have another one in the ground so I'll show you that soon but next year I'm gonna grow this and I'm actually gonna put it in a pot on its own as ornamental plant because it's it's just gorgeous to me okay so now we're going to update you guys on the container garden and uh, they're actually doing a lot better than the one in the ground because in containers, in the heat of the summer, I can actually move them around so then they don't get burned up in the sun and uh, they actually grow pretty well. So that, that's a, the advantage of growing in a container in states where it's really, really hot. Okay, so here first we have the Fatali. This is yellow Fatali. I actually transplanted this plant from the, the Aero Garden so it's been about two weeks now and they finally got adjusted so it's starting to grow now so i have a video coming up to show you the exact process if you gonna if you guys want to see it so keep um, checking back and here we have the uh, peach pumpkin uh, it had aphids problems so it's a bit delayed all of the flowers fell off and white tie this is the kingstar white tie i grow these things everywhere they're just amazing peppers and our fa my family just love them and our friends also so i grow them everywhere and i give a lot of the pods away because it's just too much for us to use and then next is one of my favorite brazilian starfish guys this is almost ready look at this I love these things. They're snackable peppers. They're just really nice and sweet, very crunchy. Uh, tastes like a fruit with a little uh, kick to it. So it's, uh, it's really nice. So I love these things. I'm having a good amount of pods for these. They're very pretty as well. They're gonna turn red soon. And then next we have, this is the Kangstar White Tie cross with the Ahi Omni color. So the cross was really difficult to do. Uh, I started uh, crossing a bunch and I got success and the pods produced a lot of seeds, but none of the seeds sprouted. So out of maybe 150 seeds or so, only one plant sprouted and this is it right here. So uh, 
I have to really, really baby the plant. And then it produced so many flowers, but all of the pods dropped except one right there. So I can't wait to try that. But I think there will be more soon uh, once the weather uh, cool down a little bit. Um, I think it, this plant enjoys the cooler condition. <laughs> so we'll see, but there's lots and lots of flowers. Okay, so we have the, the Stargazer Gold that I haven't grown in a long time because I couldn't find the seeds for it. I crossed these a, a few years ago and I grew uh, a few plants. The pods are really, really pretty. And then I lost the seeds. I thought I left it somewhere, but I couldn't find it. So this year I found it and here it is. There are not many pods yet, but I think there will be more very soon. Uh, it turns to a, a really golden color. And then I think the final color is red. That's the, that's the last stage. And here we have lemon starburst. Not as pretty as uh, some of the plants that I've seen people post it, but I'm very happy that we get pods for these. So I'll show you. Here it is. There's some yellow pods there. Some of the shapes are really nice and some are not. And uh, with the starburst, every season I always try to grow um, seeds from different plants that I either collect it or trade with people from different zones and sections or regions. I just want to see how they will perform. And so I always grow different um, uh, seeds uh, just to see. And some of them turn out really nice, guys. So let me see. Look at that one, you see? Well, not, not the best, but it's, it's really uh, what I really like in the Starburst, something like this, like a saucer shape with a little stinger at the bottom. Looks pretty nice. And here's another one that I, that I have from a different plant, Starburst also. Not pretty shape. This one's okay, but uh, yeah. It's fun to grow because uh, uh, you, you know, it gives me an idea of uh, if there's any changes, if I collect seeds from different regions and stuff like that. Okay, so here is the Kangstar Yellow. Kangstar Yellow. Uh, one pot so far, uh, not the ideal shape, <laughs> but uh, hopefully I'll get more. And we have the Linzo Cross here, the chocolate version. And man, this thing here is just loaded with peppers. There's so many little peppers. And I, what I love about this variety is that um, it's kind of like bite size and very, very spicy with a little sweetness to it. So it's a, it's a good flavor and I just love it. Uh, when I eat meals and stuff, I pick a few of these because they're not so big, you know, two, two bites and that's one pepper. So you eat a few of these every day, so it's, it's great. And then next here we have, this is called the Criss Cross, made by my buddy Chris, the one who invented the, um, the MTN grow station. And this, the seed from this came all the way from Norway, guys. It's his own cross that I, he gave me to grow. Very interesting variety. It grows up like that in the, towards the sky. Uh, it's shaped very strange, kind of roundish. interesting very nice and uh, I just love the way it looks <laughs> it is round and it's point towards the sky so I have a few pots on those and then here are some more of my Linzo crosses these things are super productive guys they just pods everywhere look at this guy you see here that is a, a hornworm egg so if you see these make sure you take pick it off you don't want a hornworm to grow and eat your plants but yeah this thing here is in a small container and I'll show you so see it's in a small maybe a gallon or so container but look at that pods everywhere lots and lots of flowers so I'll have uh, a ton of fruits and here is my poblano and this thing is very different than the usual poblano that I grew usually they turn red at the end but my poblano turns chocolate 
and I waited and waited and waited. I thought that it will turn red. See, this one's already shriveled up, so I waited too long. So that this is the final color. So I have a chocolate poblano, very nice and tasty. Very little heat, uh, good for stuffing. Sometimes I, uh, sometimes I just grill them, and uh, they're just excellent. So they're very productive. You see how they weigh down the branches. The one, the branches are really thin, so they're pondering them. They just hang over like this. It's so nice and productive. Okay, so here is another patch of my crosses. These are um, in the same family with the Lingria and the Linzo. This one here is the Lingria cross with a white tie. Look at that, guys. It's so gorgeous. And the pods are just beautiful. See, so these here point downward. The white tie points upward. I'll show you that soon. Um, a different one that I grew in the soil. But it's uh, it's not as uh, as thick. So, uh, but it does have all of the different colors. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't say it grows in cluster, but uh, it pretty much looks like so. But look at that! All of the different colors. Um, it tastes pretty good, pretty spicy, and. Uh, Except the only thing different from this is like the, the, the white tie, the walls on the inside are much thicker. But everything else, like the colors, the purple, red, orange, man, it's just pretty. So you can use these as ornamental plants that are just good to eat as well. And then this, guys, look at all of those pots on there. I have picked so many already and I've given bags of these away, like Ziploc bags to my parents and stuff to some friends and the more you pick the more they just grow they just keep putting more and more fruits out look at you can just see it when you i mean if you look at it in person it's just so much um better it's just a lot of pods very pretty and back here we have some chocolate star scream this is an enormous plant, guys. Look how tall that is. So it grows really, really tall, very nice and healthy. And uh, lots of pods forming everywhere. And where's the chocolate one? There it is right there. See the final color is chocolate. So it's still growing. So the shape are pretty inconsistent. Sometimes it looks like this. And sometimes it just looks normal. So it's still pretty early in the stages, but it is a gorgeous plant. Look at that, it's, it gets really, really big. And here is another Lingria cross. This one got chopped off at the top, it broke, and then it grew back. Even for a small plant, it still has a lot of fruits. Okay, here we have the actual Lingria just lingria not cross with anything and this is a really pretty variety and the shapes are beautiful it has a lot of uh, shapes that look like um, very dangerous looking like stingers and stuff like that it has these long thorns at the end you see that they all look like that so I really like this variety it's pretty spicy too so I eat this very often. Has a little, little nice uh, sweetness to it, but it, it packs a punch. So it looks very, very innocent and doesn't look hot, but it's very, very hot. And here we have a few under my apple tree. This is a, the same one in the big bucket that is very productive that I showed earlier. So same one. It's just grown in a five gallon. And again, it's very productive. Fruits everywhere. I just keep picking these uh, to give to friends and stuff and family. And again, they keep growing back. And this is a different one. This is another one. Uh, the Lin Ling is a Linzo. Yeah, the Linzo cross, the chocolate version. And uh, it is not uh, grown in clusters, but it still is very productive. And the final color is chocolate as well. So uh, a lot of these are chocolate because of the, the parent plant, the chocolate Linzo. And then this is the uh, a variety from Spain. This is the Alegria Riojana. 
and I grew this plant in a little mini baby bottle. I did a review on this before and then I took it out of the mini baby bottle and I placed it in soil, gave it some fertilizer uh, and it started to grow. It could grow actually bigger than this but it, because um, I trimmed so much it kind of stayed small but good, good pods, very nice tasting and I may grow that again next year. Okay, on to the raised beds. And look at how beautiful these looks compared to uh, the, the previous uh, few uh, updates. Because uh, again, as I mentioned, I started to keep a fertilizing schedule every week now. So they are just beautiful and green. Doesn't look sick with the yellow leaves anymore. And they are pushing pots like crazy. All of these here have lots and lots of flowers forming and pots forming. So this one here is a orange flame. So all of these here, I have four of them, the orange flames, but one of them turned out to be yellow. Um, so again, the original parent was a, was a scotch bonnet, so it's yellow. So one of these here actually turned out yellow. So this here is actually a yellow one. So I will show you that uh, uh, once uh, they uh, produce the color. But yeah, they're very productive. They, they grow enormous and the fruits are very nice. I love the way they look. And then here is one of the prize plants that I have. I'm looking forward to this. This is the Jay's Peach Ghost crossed with a Primo. And guys, the pods here are beautiful. You see that? It has a nice stinger, kind of round. And uh, they all look like that. Even the baby pods have stingers. So. Look at this one. So I will show you guys more of this plant soon once uh, I get fruits. So the final color should be orange. Some more of the Lingria Linzo Cross, the chocolate Linzo Cross. These are extra. And here is the white tie. Entire raised bed with white tie. So if you go back to the previous uh, updates, you will see these plants look sick. The leaves are yellow. It just doesn't did it didn't look very nice. So again, the fertilizing schedule I placed on here works really really well. Uh, I don't I didn't use anything um, uh, you know crazy, just very simple fertilizer that I got from Home Depot. So I will post the link to those just in case you want to buy some and uh, I love those because they're kind of like slow release so uh, they work really well for pepper plants because peppers if you over fertilize them you're gonna make them sick and they will look terrible so that is the white tie lots and lots of pods I picked so many of these already so I've been picking and picking so the more I pick the more they produce they keep having more pods you see how they grow upward not like the uh, the li lingerie across where the white tie grows sideways so very beautiful. Okay, next we have, this is a Fire Blast, a cross made by one of our members on Pepper Lovers. And this is actually a really neat variety, extremely productive, produce lots and lots of pods. And the pods are very interesting. Sometimes they look like a little mini ghost, shaped like that. And uh, this is not the final color yet. The final color is like a lipstick red color, which is very pretty. So sometimes they have hooks and tails and sometimes they just look straight. So it's a very early stage, but uh, a great variety to grow. Pretty spicy and uh, lots and lots of uh, peppers when you grow these. So it gets pretty big. And then next I have Habanero. This is actually the one I purchased from Lowe's. Wow, look at these guys. I mean, I gotten so many peppers off of these already. So uh, they keep they keep pushing out more pods and the pods are pretty big. I love these because I dry them as powder and put on my pizza and spaghetti. And man, it is so good. And uh, easy to grow and uh, pretty nice looking plants really. And so you should grow these if you have never grown super hot before. Habanero is a great variety. And uh, I bought two plants, actually in a single pot. So sometimes you buy them, they have two plants in a pot and all you have to do is divide them and then you get two plants. So even though they're small, it's fine, just buy them and then you get two plants. So these, look at the size of these pods, guys. They're huge. 
And then next we have my lemon starburst. This is the one that I grew for a contest, but I don't think it's gonna be <laughs> anywhere close to winning anything. Uh, it just started pushing out pods and the shapes are actually pretty nice. I love these, look at that. See that, the stinger and the saucer shape, pretty cool. So I think I got around maybe 20 pods on here right now. And here is another raised bed that has so many different things. And there it is right there. That is the pink tiger that I mentioned. I grew them in, uh, in the ground, but it's being shaded by two of my peach pumpkin. And here are the Houston white tie. So if you go back to the earlier, um, maybe the previous update, I mentioned about the plant being so deficient that it almost looked like um, it had diseases. So that is the case here. Uh, sometimes the plant is so deficient, it's lacking nutrients, and it will be so sick looking that it, uh, it looks like it has diseases on them, like, um, uh, you know, like those uh, spotted, and uh, this, what do they call brown spots on them, like f fungus. But uh, after I fertilized them, man, look at this. They're starting to look so much better. Lots and lots of pods, as you can see. So we picked a lot of these already as well. So uh, again, most of the varieties I grow, and I love to grow them because they're so productive, and, and you can see why. And then here, this is the Stargazer. I haven't grown this uh, for a while as well. And look at the size of the plant. It is enormous. The pods are really nice. Um, I love these. They're, they're sweet. That's the, the crazy thing about these. They're sweet and spicy. They look a little bit like the, the chocolate star scream, but the skin is a little bit wrinkly, more wrinkly. And there, there's, this one is just now pushing out more and more pods and it's forming a ton of flowers. So I will get a lot of more, a lot more fruits very soon because our season's pretty long. We have to probably November, maybe in, even later sometimes. So um, expect to see more pods from those plants. I will show you very soon. And the peach pumpkin uh, is just pushing out flowers, so there's nothing happening to those plants. But they, they're pretty big right now. Look how big they are. And then I have some sweet linzos that are just starting to grow. And then these are um, the queenie. And this one is a sweet one. I also have a, a spicy one that I grew before. So this one here is extremely productive again. <laughs> Look, look at how many pods there are on just one little, sh uh, I don't, I don't even call these a node, but it's like a little branch. So they, they, they spread out branching, they branch out and each branch will have a ton of pods on them. So you see each where I'm touching here is a little branch of its own. And sometimes they branch out again, branch out again, it's like a bonsai. And then here is a volunteer sugar rush. I love sugar rush can't go wrong with those variety so I took a plant that f that grew voluntarily out of the the spot where the, the sugar grass grew last year and that's what I got and here we have this is a, another Linzo cross so again it turns chocolate at the end there's a chocolate pod right there very productive I, I love growing those things I grow them everywhere because they're just so productive and tasty and then here are some experiment raised bed that I added. So I put white tie in there, uh, Brazilian starfish over there, and a bunch of radishes. So the radishes are basically there to uh, uh, like a distraction for aphids. So aphids will go to radishes first because they love radishes and they, they will ignore my pepper plants. And it actually been working so far. The pepper plants have no aphids and the radishes you will see a few and here lastly we have an experimental raised bed and i have so many beautiful plants going right now so next year i would know exactly what to do because i'm experimenting right here so i'm going to follow the exact procedure and i will get good growth for my next year plants okay so that is pretty much for the update thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe